sick find, dude. This is a 2021 Toyota Land Cruiser Heritage Edition, also known as the 200 Series, and it is unfortunately the last 200 Series Land Cruiser that is coming to the US. So, to do a commemorative video to our favorite off-roader here on this channel, we brought along and actually purchased the cheapest 100 Series Land Cruiser right here. This is a 2000 uh, Land Cruiser with 220,000 miles. Our editor Liam purchased it. And today we're going to find out if $91,000 versus 4,900 bucks makes any difference whatsoever. Should be kind of neat. So this right here is my 2000 UZJ 100, 100 series Land Cruiser. I purchased this about a month and a half ago. For $4,900, it was actually the cheapest 100 series Land Cruiser in the country. Let me show you a quick walk around here. It's not perfect, but as you can see, the paint is all right. Not too bad. It does have a couple of battle scars. There's a little dent in the fender right here. Little fender bender here, but all in all, not a bad purchase at all. So this comes with a 4.7 liter 2UZ V8. It makes about 235 horsepower and about 280 foot pounds of torque. Now, despite almost 21 years difference between Kyle's 2021 Heritage Edition and my 100 series, the 200 series chassis is actually almost 12 years old. Uh, they haven't changed it a whole lot since 2008. So a lot of similarities between the two. Uh, both vehicles do not have mechanical differentials. Both utilize the A-Track system. Kyle's has a little bit more tech uh, than mine does, but at $4,900, I think you will find this Land Cruiser can do every Land Cruiser thing as the 2021, despite the almost $85,000 difference in price. I think you've hit your bumper there. <laughs> Austin Powers, part seven. And this is the $91,000 200 series. It is the Heritage Edition, which let me show you what that does. It gives you these super cool bronze BBS forged aluminum wheels with the old school Toyota center caps. Gotta love that. It also gives you the Yakima roof basket up there, which is super rad. It deletes the running boards. It looks like it raises the ride height. I don't know, I can't find anywhere in the Toyota press material that says it actually raises the ride height, but I'm convinced because it's so much taller than a normal Land Cruiser. And come with me to the back, as long as I don't fall down. This is the coolest thing ever. It has the old school Toyota Land Cruiser badge. Now, this is not the first 200 series that we've had on this channel. We had a 2020 Heritage Edition that we did some light off-roading and actually took it around the racetrack for a lap, which was pretty interesting. But uh, in this, I really wanna see if Land Cruisers are worth 91 grand brand new. That's why Liam brought the less than $5,000 100 series. Honestly, just driving it up here, we were shredding on some back roads and uh, yeah, they, they seem to be pretty evenly matched for sure. So uh, my gut feeling tells me I'd want the new $91,000 one or maybe 45 100 series. So it'd be kind of neat to uh, play around. Wouldn't be that many, of course, but it'd be kind of neat to play around out here in the mountains and see the difference. Let me show you the interior though. This one is still utilitarian. Sorry for the jackets and Starbucks, but you can see the uh, leather heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel. Although I will say this car is lacking in some technology. You know, one USB-A port, for example, <laughs> no USB-C, no CarPlay, nothing that really blows you away from a technological standpoint. What you're paying for with this car is years of proven reliability, and this thing will reach a half a million miles, no problem, just like every Land Cruiser. I mean, Liam's only has 220,000 miles, and it's just getting broken in. So you buy this thing, and you keep it for 20, 30, 40 years, however long. And uh, at the, that might be one of the only cars that, that you could do that reliably with. So let's, uh, let's take them up the trail and we'll talk more about them, but I'm, I'm really curious to get these things on some dirt, start to flex them out and see if there's any difference between the cheapest 100 series and the most expensive newest 200 series. <laughs> Just 
some baby stuff right there. Uh, really got to find some more aggressive trails. I think these Land Cruisers, that's not even close to what they can do. So far though, the uh, cheapest 100 series is doing everything the 200 can. Neither are stressed at all. I've wheeled this thing yet. Really? That was totally flexed. I don't think I'm going to bring the heritage. I probably wouldn't go through that, to be completely honest. <laughs> but man. that's super impressive that that made it through. Uh, as soon as you dip down and this giant snowbank right here just collapsed, it's deep. Yeah. Way deeper than I thought. I kind of realized that. <laughs> you realized that after you were in. <laughs> after I was in. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, uh, okay. Well, we know the capability of that vehicle is good. <laughs> also, you're not on snow tires, are you? I'm just on, um, no. Yeah, general all season. General, yeah. all, um, <laughs> they're Toyo HTs. Toyo HTs, and I have some AT tire on that one too. All right, well, let's go find some more manageable yeah. things that, where we won't <laughs> risk uh, crashing them into trees. Right. <laughs> Toyota. Well, a little bit more of an overlanding trail than the off-roading stuff I'd like to put the cars through, but let's talk about some of the technology differences between the two. Uh, so Liam, why don't you come on over? Does yours have the same 5.7 liter V8 or is it actually different? It does not. The basic block geometry is more or less the same. However, the 3UR in your 200 series is a bit different than the 2UZ in mine. So yours is a 5.7 liter dual overhead cam. Mine is only a 4.7 liter. Trusty workhorse, um, you make about 381 horsepower. Yep. I am quite down, I am at 235. Right, and up here at altitude, it's a lot less a than lot that. Less. You might and, be under 200. And that was new out of the box <laughs> right. as well. So, <laughs> so, yes. so Timon, come on over. Uh, let's talk technology. So, both no locking diffs, right? Yours was the first year of no lockers. Correct, yes. So, some of the early models from 97 to 99 had the option of a rear locker. You okay. always always lock out the center. The um, 2000 was the first year they introduced the A-Track traction control system. So mm -hmm. it goes off of signals from two uh, wheel speed sensors. More or less the same system on this, except it can go off of all four wheel speed right, sensors. Right, sure, yeah. This is uh, trying to figure out what wheel's doing what yeah, and breaking. Yeah, it try, tries to act like a differential. Yeah. Or, um, I, like a um, we both have high and low range gearboxes, but I have eight gears and you have four. Yeah. So I have 16 gears essentially to choose right. from where you have eight. Uh, as opposed to my eight. Right. Uh, also, uh, this one has uh, crawl control. So if I find myself on a real aggressive obstacle course, I can just dial in the speed I want yep. the car and it just does everything for me. Yeah. Uh, uphill and downhill. It works really well. Another thing I believe that this has is um, you actually have different settings for the A track, so you can pick between mud, snow, Absolutely. sand, etc. Um, there is no option on the right on my 100 series. You kind of just hope that it works. So for me to select those, I found I have to have the truck in low range. Interesting. Yeah, so I can't go like a Land Rover. You can go like mud ruts or gravel. Uh, but you can choose your gearbox separately. This is like low range, then it turns on all the off-roady stuff. Ah, yeah, that's kind of interesting. 
And I would think that's almost um, not advantageous. There, yeah, it kind of bugs of... me. That's kind of weird because I don't want to be in low range. There's no need up here. We're right. not doing Na crawling. Naturally, you're just yeah. going at normal speed. Yeah, yeah. I haven't um, run out of power in it yet. Another interesting feature that this has is the Kinetic Dynamic Suspension Control System, KDSS. Yeah. So what that does is essentially there are two hydraulic pumps, one front and rear, and it actually stiffens and adjusts the stiffness of the sway bar via hydraulics. Another interesting thing that you can do is in uh, high flex situations where you need a lot of articulation, it will actually disengage the sway bars entirely, allowing your, specifically the rear, which is still a solid axle, to have more flex. You can try to have as much contact patch as possible, which is really useful. And the crazy part about that is, is it, it's a totally passive mechanical system. So unlike a electronic rear diff lock disconnect like uh, regular Rubicons have, yeah. this happens purely passively and requires no power for it to operate. So it just, in terms of longevity, this will just work and work. Guys, our off-roading adventure here in northern Colorado, our exploration trip near our home has brought us to a pretty sad sight. You'll notice in the video, you'll see a ton of burnt trees. Recently, we had some crazy forest fires run through our area, really uh, destroy a ton of things. And part of that is this right here. We believe this may have been a, uh, a house they were planning on building and there's tons of construction equipment up here. Could have been a shelter for some logger equipment, who knows, but you can see everything is just demolished and torn up. Uh, you know, tons of animals are, are displaced because of this. It's really a, a detrimental thing. Of course, it's a natural event. One of the things we really take note of when we go off-roading is uh, trying to leave as little trace as possible, being kind to our environment. We, you know, never leave trash behind, try not to dig out ruts with the vehicles, things like this, because we want to leave our land as if we found it. This is our home. We want to take care of it. So let's go explore this urban jungle on the top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere. Seriously, we're way out in the mountains right now and uh, just stumbled upon this. Uh, look at these uh, excavator machines over here that are all burnt up. Uh, seriously insane stuff. Let's go, uh, let's go explore. Yeah. Well, I think this What'd you property get? we could build a on. A mug and it teaches right? you how and to make buy. a drink. Yeah. <laughs> oh, neat. That's pretty cool. The out-of-spec ranch. The new out-of-spec ranch. Oh my god, dude. What is it? An AR. There's two. Yo. Oil stuff. So lots of guns. She got there some ammo. Yeah. Nice. Make sure you leave it. We're not taking it. Burnt yeah, a lot of that stuff's burnt to a crisp in there. One. This is super neat. This is like someone's bug out shelter. Yeah, literally. That's crazy. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of the video game Fallout, but that's as close to Fallout in real life as I think most of us will ever get. Bunch of guns. It's probably somebody's bug out shelter. Yep, that's what I'm thinking. Bug out shelter for sure. <laughs> At one point. Super neat, right? Built into the ground. Insane. Yeah. Absolutely nuts. It's like no one's been here since the fires is what I'm guessing. Yeah. Tons of ammunition. There were probably five or six ARs in there. That's pretty neat. Kind of wild stuff. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely. This is the kind of stuff you get off-roading. Yeah. This definitely would have been a sick 
bug out area Dude, though. Dude, this would have been as good as it gets. This is what we need. Yeah. Like and subscribe so we can build <laughs> <laughs> so we can basically take over this land. We gotta figure out who owns this. Yeah, try to buy this. Yeah, and try and get this. It must have gotten hot up here. Look, it twisted the frame from the heat and the weight of this thing sitting on the hill on this generator. Man, toasty for sure. Forest fires are no joke. No joke. A little bit that popped through that lit all this up. This all this burned in like a day and a half. Right. It ran from here almost all the way to Masonville. And this was, I mean, they were saying like 80, 90 mile an hour winds while this was happening. So if it heated up, it'd be more than enough to blow over a little metal pole barn like this. No problem. I bet the house is going to be pretty to it. Nice juicy spot for your tile. Yeah. Very open concept. <laughs> right now it's real open concept. <laughs> 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 yeah what a bummer what a bummer all right well let's hit the trail some more and see what else we can come yeah. across and uh head on out All right, guys, this is where we're gonna do a little bit of a challenge between the 100 and the 200 series. We're just gonna try out this obstacle here. While it's not that aggressive, this is about the most you'll find out on the trails. Uh, so we're gonna climb up this snowy little section, do a little bit of articulation over these uh, sort of elephant step style stuff. We're gonna have to drop wheels, and then we're gonna do a squeeze through those trees. So we're just gonna cut uh, this corner right across this land here. Liam, you think, uh, which obviously I think the 200 series is gonna be more capable, but do you think yours can do it? I think with a little bit of uh, finesse and the right line, I will be able to get through it. Uh, however, the tires I'm on are definitely not advantageous, but I'm gonna give it a red hot go and do everything I can to get through this. Yeah, well, same here. We'll see if this 200 series can make it through. I, I bet it can. Uh, these are big machines to crawl through these kind of yeah, things. They're definitely absolutely. more overlanders than off-roaders, but between mud and sand, loose rock, mogul, rock and dirt, I think I'm gonna go for I don't know, loose rock, I guess, would be the best. Uh, rock and dirt, rock and dirt, that's what this is. A Little bit of snow, but that's okay. I'm gonna lock the center differential with this button down here. This one right here locks the center diff. So now I'm in low range, in rock and dirt. I have uh, everything ready to rock and roll, so let's go do it. All right, here we go, we're gonna crawl up. Uh, what a difference it made when I just parked it up here with the center dip not locked and it spun. Here we go, hold on. Gentle. Yeah. Good pass. Gotta give it the beans. Cut it. Yep. 
You're good. Like nothing. This thing had crawled itself right up there. How about that? Just had to give it some persuasion of wide open throttle, and then she figured it out. That was pretty sweet. Let's get this corner done. Oh, I have another technique here, another tool. I'm gonna click this little button. What this is gonna do is turn assist function not available. Let me activate crawl control, speed on one. I'm gonna do this, check system operations. Hold on. Maybe I need to open the center diff for this to work. That might make sense. Center diff open. Crawl, yeah, now I got the turn. So when I turn all the way, it's gonna lock that inside rear wheel. Take a look. Well guys, we've gotten pretty deep in the mountains. We found tons of fire damage. It's actually pretty sad. Uh, you know, some remote cabins that are just burnt down to the frame. Uh, pretty insane. And, and you know, we, we came out here to evaluate the vehicles and we've turned out to be evaluating the land more than anything. And you know what, that's probably the point of these cars. And uh, both vehicles have no problem getting us out here to the middle of nowhere. I mean, Liam uh, has the you know cheapest 100 series Land Cruiser. And honestly, uh, we haven't been pushing the cars that hard. We haven't been totally flexing them out, but uh, both cars have gotten us out here to the wilderness. And I think that's kind of the point. Yeah, once you get past, um, as you know, the 100 series is the first uh, independent front suspension Land Cruiser. Um, most of the purists will say the four wheel drive capability kind of died when they did that. So if you're gonna get something to crawl or something like that, a 60 or an 80 with a solid axle is probably a little bit better bet. Um, but yeah, for overlanding, you're Hard, pre this kind hard, of stuff? hard press to find a vehicle better than a Land Cruiser. I mean, Cruiser. the price differential, though, like, let's just, you know, that's 91 and that's five grand. Nears makes no difference. Yeah. Right? So, are you getting that much more? I mean, not really. You're listening to music and having yeah. a comfortable ride yeah. just as much as we are. I got heated, heated seats, leather. I got, I've got a little Bluetooth adapter. It only cost me like $13 on Amazon. Right. So, so I think the, the, the true answer to this off roading challenge between the cheapest Land Cruiser and the newest one is both win. Yeah. Because it just depends on, you know, do you have the money to spend? Because they both accomplish the exact same task. Uh, if you have the money to spend and you just want the most dependable, reliable hey, off-roader, this is the way to go, yeah. right? So uh, I think that the what we found out is there's a Land Cruiser. They both accomplish anything, but there's a Land Cruiser at every price point that you're looking for. It'll get the job done. It'll get the job done. All right, cool. Well, thanks for watching. We're gonna get ourselves off this mountain and enjoy some more land cruisering. But I think the answer here is 100 versus 200 series, least expensive 100 versus most expensive 200. You win no matter what.